Inherited bleeding disorders are serious conditions that impact the daily lives of millions of men, women, and children around the world, their families, and their communities. During this video, we'll learn more about the many faces of bleeding disorders, including hemophilia A and B, symptomatic carriers of hemophilia, von Willebrand disease, rare clotting factor deficiencies, and inherited platelet disorders. In a healthy person, bleeding starts when a blood vessel is injured and blood leaks out. The blood vessel tightens up to help slow the bleeding. Blood cells called platelets make a plug to patch the hole. Next, many clotting factors, which are part of the blood, work together to form a clot over the plug. This makes the plug stronger and stops the bleeding. People with bleeding disorders have deficiency or dysfunction of clotting factor or platelets, resulting in inability to stop bleeding when injured. Consequently, the clot they form is weak and bleeding goes on longer than normal. Bleeding stops when the deficient or dysfunctional clotting factor is replaced. The prevalence of haemophilia is about 1 in 5,000 male births. It can be a very serious disorder in its most severe form. Haemophilia A is a deficiency in clotting factor 8 and haemophilia B is a deficiency in clotting factor 9. Haemophilia is an inherited condition. It's carried on the X chromosome, so it's traditionally passed down from a mother to her son. But in about 30% of cases, there isn't a family history, and it seems to occur as a spontaneous new event. These individuals are prone to develop bleeding into their joints and muscles, starting at a very early age. And if this isn't appropriately treated, it can result in long-lasting damage. At the moment, there is no cure for haemophilia, but we do have very good treatment available to replace the missing clotting factor, but 75% of people with severe haemophilia don't have access to appropriate treatment. Haemophilia has had a pretty severe effect on my body. I'm 24 years old and I need, need a knee replacement. Um, I have pretty bad arthritis in certain parts of my body and, and target joints as well. So some days I have to deal with a lot of pain and it can be quite a struggle. To take care of hemophilia in my everyday life, I need to eat right, exercise, take my factor concentrates, know my limitation, and I need to have regular visits with the hemophilia treatment center. Although hemophilia poses its challenges for me, I'm still able to lead a relatively normal life. While hemophilia primarily affects men, women who have the hemophilia gene are called carriers and they can pass the gene on to their children. Though most carriers will be asymptomatic in day-to-day -day life, some may also experience bleeding complications, including excessive bleeding during menstruation, childbirth, and surgical interventions. I found out that I was a carrier the same time that we had a diagnosis that my son Paul has hemophilia. Looking back, I guess I did have prolonged bleeding and probably more bleeding than other people. I wonder about some of my own symptoms as, as a carrier and, and maybe why I didn't pay a little bit more attention to them. But I think most mothers of, of um, people with a bleeding disorder concentrated so much on what was happening to their son that some of their own problems certainly seem very trivial. And I think nowadays we're beginning to talk about some of the issues that symptomatic carriers have. So it's important for people to educate themselves and stay connected with their treatment centers. While only women can be symptomatic carriers, both men and women can have von Willebrand disease. Although it is the most common inherited bleeding disorder in the world, only a small percentage of people living with it have been diagnosed. Like symptomatic carriers of hemophilia, von Willebrand disease is difficult to diagnose, particularly in women. Many people with von Willebrand disease have few or no symptoms, and women might not know they have von Willebrand disease until they experience complications in childbirth or after surgery. In fact, Typically, it takes nearly 16 years on average for a woman with von Willebrand disease to be diagnosed. I was diagnosed uh, with the von Willebrand disease type 3 when I was uh, two years old. I have very strong and heavy gum bleeding, joint bleedings, and a strong menstruation, menorrhagia. I was not able to have the same life like my sister. And now when I get um, a good replacement therapy and physical therapy. I have only a little bit of gum bleeding. Now I have my hobbies with reading books and uh, go for cinema and go shopping and uh, to be my, with my family, it's great for me. 
Rare clotting factor deficiencies are bleeding disorders in which people are missing one of the factors or these factors aren't working properly. Less is known about these disorders as many have only been discovered in the last 40 years. The rare factor deficiencies can present in many different ways. The sexes are affected equally, so particularly women may present with menorrhagia or bleeding after childbirth, but there's a whole gamut of different symptoms that people can have that should be investigated. These can be similar to people with von Willebrand disease, but rather different from haemophilia A and B. A great deal of progress has been made in the diagnosis and management of haemophilia A and B. We're somewhat behind that with the rare factor deficiencies. Even if they are diagnosed, because the numbers of patients are small, we don't have the same level of information. There are fewer products available too for these conditions and we need to work at research and development in those areas so that we can truly offer treatment for all. I am one of only a few people in the world with rare factor deficiency 1 and have faced many physical and emotional challenges. There are other rare bleeding disorders that are also as uncommon. The greatest challenge for me has been educating my friends, my family and even some healthcare professionals about the specific needs I have with regard to care and treatment. People who have platelet disorders can't stop bleeding from little injuries and they can have very serious bleeding problems with skin bruising, nosebleeds and bleeding of all different sorts that presents often very early in life and can be very difficult to control. People with severe bleeding disorders due to platelet defects may need platelet transfusions and these may be difficult to come by in some areas of the world and may seriously restrict what can be done to assist those patients. But we need to search for other ways of trying to stop bleeding in individuals with these very serious disorders. Bleeding disorders are serious and can be life-threatening, but thanks to advances in bleeding disorder care, including comprehensive care and factory replacement therapies, people can live longer, more fulfilling lives than ever before. However, many people with bleeding disorders do not have access to adequate care. The ultimate goal for people with bleeding disorders is to find a cure. In the meantime, we need to remain vigilant about ensuring we have a high quality of life, not only where I'm from, but for everybody around the world. The mission of the World Federation of Haemophilia is to bring a good standard of care and treatment to all people with inherited bleeding disorders, wherever they live all over the world. And we can do this by all working together. The patient organisations, the people with bleeding disorders and all healthcare professionals. And in this way, we will truly be able to bring treatment for all. Visit wfh.org slash whd for more information and to learn how you can help make a difference for those living with bleeding disorders.